Nikon's new mirrorless camera is here. A little bit more information than they really expected. We have dug through the photos and the video that's out there, cranked up the shadows so we can peek inside. And we know an awful lot about this new camera that is not yet officially announced. Let's talk about it. First of all, it has a new mount that NikonRumors.com is calling the Z mount. And it seems like it's physically larger than the existing Nikon mount. Nikon always receives some criticism for having an unusually small mount, which could make lens designs difficult. The bigger mount just gives you more flexibility with how lenses are are designed and the fact that it's shallow. Uh, they had they are able to take the mirror out of a DSLR and make the entire camera thinner. That means that lens elements can be placed closer to the sensor and especially with wide angle lenses that gives the designers a lot more flexibility and allows them to build potentially faster lenses like lenses with um, f-stops lower than one. Here's another close-up of that mount. It's a round bayonet mount, so you'll put it in and twist it probably to the left like Nikon cameras already do. One notable design element we can see in these video clips is that it has a nice thick grip on it. This is really key. One of the one of the reasons we pick up a D850 over a Sony for it regularly is it just feels better in our hands. The new Sony cameras do have bigger grips than the previous generations, but it's still rather thin, especially if you're somebody who has very large fingers and hands. So we're glad to see a big grip on a mirrorless camera. After all, it's not just about being small. Uh, if you haven't yet, head to freesdp.com, which like the name implies, you can get a free copy of Stunning Digital Photography. It's We've given away over 150,000 copies already, and that sounds incredibly stupid to me because we've been selling it for years. It's how we make our living. Uh, but we want to give everybody a chance to get it because we know many people would never actually go out and buy a book. It's to celebrate hitting 1 million subscribers. While you're at freesdp.com, you can sign up to win a free camera, which could be a Nikon D850, a Canon uh, 5D Mark IV, or a Sony a7 or III, or $3,000 cash US to spend however you want. And you can get a coupon code for 30% off there to get a cool shirt like the one I'm wearing here or signed copies of any of our books for a very limited time. Based on the video, it looks like the LCD screen on the rear is much larger than a typical camera. Um, this is a, a D750 over on the right here. And that's good news that maybe they're designing the screen to be a little more prominent. These are renders though, so it's possible that it's not really that big. Uh, the Electronic viewfinder is DSLR style, so it's kind of mounted in the mirror, but we can see on the left side, it's it's pretty shallow there. Uh, maybe it's a little bit shallower than it is on a D850, but it's not mounted to the left like a range finder. You could put the viewfinder anywhere on a mirrorless camera, but they chose to continue the sort of DSLR um, system. And we can see that it does not have a built-in flash. So if you wanted a flash, you'd have to attach it. Uh, looking closely at the video, I believe it has a thumbstick on the back, which I think is key. It's a must have on all of these pro level cameras, but some cameras like the D610 didn't have it. So it is important to know. I'm going to guess that they do have buttons along the left hand side of the camera. I could not make them out in any of the video clips. However, if you look at uh, some of their cameras, it's it's tilted a little bit on the left, so it might not show up in profile. But there's also kind of a big gap between this side of the, the screen and that. So I do think that there might be a row of left buttons that we haven't been able to actually see. I believe it's a tilty screen that tilts up and down like on the D850 and the D750. I do not believe it is a flippy screen like on the D5500. That's too bad. I really love flippy screens, but I think we would have been able to see that joint along the left in the video clips and it doesn't seem like it's there. The buttons to me resemble those on the Nikon DF more than any other Nikon camera. There are a couple of buttons there allowing you to quickly hit an AF on or maybe a secondary AF on button to do some other functions. So that's good news. It's not a low end camera. They don't look sealed. None of these buttons or dials look sealed like they do on a Nikon D5, which tells me they're targeting enthusiasts, but not the hardcore pro who has to stay out in the pouring rain. The shutter button itself seems to resemble that of the D750 or D850 in that it seems to have the little uh, on off switch right there on the shutter button. And it has a couple of other buttons that you could easily push with your index finger. We can also see that there's a big knobby, probably a diopter right there on the side of the electronic viewfinder. I'm not sure why they decided to make it so prominent on this one. The modal seems to be basic here. I don't see any evidence that they have uh, 
some a, a secondary dial below it to control the shutter like they do on the D7500. It seems like it's just one very basic simple dial that will probably change modes. That is it is definitely not the dial from the D850 which is a little more weather sealed and a little uh, requires soft buttons. Um, it's debatable whether or not it has a top screen at this point. NikonRumors.com is reporting that it will have a top screen. I couldn't see any evidence of that in the video and I thought maybe that this one button poking up would be where the top dial would have to be and there, thus it would prove that it didn't have a top dial but I'm just not confident at this point. Um, I do hope that it has a nice top dial. The the X-H1 from Fuji is about as thick as this and it does manage to fit a top dial in there. The one lens that they showed in the video is, it looks like a prime lens because it does not have a zoom ring on it, only a focusing ring. It does not have an f-stop ring like the Fuji lenses do. That's too bad. They are, Nikon is making a whole new mount here. They'll require new lenses. Of course, old lenses will be adapted, but this is an opportunity to, to put some cool design elements and like making all your lenses have f-stop rings and this one does not. Um, from another photo, I could see that it did not have a switch to turn IS on or off. It only had a manual focus, autofocus switch. And to me, that means that the lens is not stabilized. Now, a lot of primes are not stabilized. However, it could also indicate that Nikon is building stabilization into the body and thus the lenses don't need to be stabilized. We'll have to see. Based on the choices Ni Nikon's marketing is making in releasing this teaser video early, to me, it's Nikon saying, hey, everybody, we recognize that mirrorless cameras are super cool. We know you want all the benefits of an electronic viewfinder, but hang on, don't switch to Sony just yet. Our camera's not ready, but we're working on it, and here is some evidence to just make you delay your switch a little bit until they can get this to market. They're already way behind. You know, Sony's been producing full-frame mirrorless cameras for a year, and a lot of people are switching, and they're sick of waiting, so they're just trying to extend your patience a little bit by teasing you. The marketing department is saying, hey, we have the exterior design ready, so let's make a render of it and tease it, but we're not sure about all the internals. They probably haven't nailed down the specs, like the frames per second and which sensor they're going to use, or you know how the 4K video is going to be, so they're just teasing what they have. Um, I'm guessing by the way they marketed it that it's going to be a good high megapixel camera. They're showing it out at night in the stars. And uh, if they're emphasizing shooting at night, that often means that it's going to be a low megapixel camera um, because people equate sort of lower megapixel counts with better high ISO performance. It's, it's not necessarily always true, but that's how people think. And I'm going to guess that they're going to announce it in September, probably prior to Photokina so that everybody will be pumped to go see it at Photokina. The title of the video that they release is called Travel of Light. And those words don't belong together in English. <laughs> and that tells me that uh, it was probably the marketing department in Japan that came up with it. They probably wrote a bunch of words on a board and found the words travel and light were two words that they wanted their product to be associated with. So mirrorless cameras tend to be smaller and that might be why they decided to choose the word travel. And light, of course, can mean two things. Light is necessary for photography, but light also means lightweight in English. Putting the of in the middle doesn't make much sense. Like in English, we would have said journey of light if that's what we meant, but they probably just put those words together and nobody in uh, Nikon US managed to <laughs> stop them from making a little bit of a grammatical mistake there. But I do think it tells us what their future marketing is going to be around. Uh, these are lightweight versions of our cameras, but not replacements for our full pro DSLRs. Um, predictions partially based on the rumors from NikonRumors.com is I'm going to guess that it's going to have a Z in the name and that this particular one they're showing here is going to be the Z600, something along the lines of a D610, like the low-end full-frame camera. From that, I would guess it would be about $2,000 US to compete with the Sony a7 III, 24 megapixels. Nikon's guessing nine frames per second. That sounds about right to me. NikonRumors.com, that is. Um, I'm guessing it is going to have 4K. And I would have said it wouldn't have IBIS because Nikon hasn't done that really. But NikonRumors.com is saying it is going to have IBIS and I trust them better than I trust myself. So Perhaps it will actually have IBIS. It needs to have IBIS or it's not going to be able to compete well with the Sony a7 III, which is what this is targeted at. 
NikonRumors.com is also reporting that they see a 45 megapixel camera coming. So maybe there'll be a second more serious camera along the lines of the D850 that will have, you know, more buttons and dials uh, and maybe more weather sealing as well as more megapixels. My advice to Nikon at this point would be to invest 100% in the full frame mount. Do not divide the mount between APS-C and full frame. You're going to be very limited for lenses. You need all your engineering resources going into one thing. Don't ever make an APS-C sensor or lens for this. You can make cheap full frame sensors if that's your concern, but just stop with the multiple sensor size thing. Um, publish roadmaps for people when you launch it. Tell them which lenses are coming out when, because you're not going to have a full suite of lenses. But if people know that things are coming, even if you're not if you know, even if you don't 100% nail the dates, they'll have a lot more confidence that you're going to continue in, to invest in the system. We saw Nikon One die, and those users were kind of heartbroken when it just kind of fades away. So we need to know, we need to have confidence that you're investing in this forever. Um, price the bodies aggressively, even if it means you have to charge more for the lenses. Uh, I want to see you match or be below the Sony pricing, or it's going to be a hard sell for you. It's going to make life easy for Sony. Hire a young mobile development team, people who have successfully built popular smartphone apps. Have them not only make a new version of SnapBridge, but hopefully make a new operating system for these cameras. It is a fresh start for you. I would love to see you release an Android operating system that supported third-party apps, even if they were carefully controlled. That's probably not gonna happen. But that is something that would separate you from the rest of the industry and mean a lot, especially to the hardcore enthusiast audience. And I would also encourage you to create frequent updates for your cameras, not unlike Fuji does. They have a great model for this. Thanks for watching. If you have any other thoughts, if you have questions that we might be able to speculate wildly about, write them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear whether you're still gonna switch to Sony or if you're holding out to see what Nikon will actually do. And be sure to subscribe because I expect to be making one of these videos for the new Canon full frame mirrorless anytime, sometime soon, because they will probably answer Nikon. That only makes sense. Once again, pick up your free copy of Stunning Digital Photography at freesdp.com, enter to win a camera and get 30% off signed books and cool new t-shirts like this brand new one here. Bye guys.